I have always liked the Volvo XC40 and its SUV Coupe brother, the C40. But in the electric version, yeah, the range and efficiency were a little bit off. This is about to change. Or is it? We're going to find out with the upgraded XC40 here with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front all the way closed in the recharged version or this pure electric version. There are still also combustion engines available for the XC40, but this the pure EV. Cloud blue is this really super light bluish or maybe even grayish color. Very interesting one. And the Thor's Hammer LED. This one also has the optional pixel light for more performance. The length stays at 4 meters 43 or 174 inches. By the way, the C40 just a centimeter longer in the rear, but it's more this shape that is different. You can also get a two-tone roof. You just have to check that it's not really off as for the color combination. Wheels here, in this case, the biggest one that are available, 20 inch. They're a little bit more aerodynamic now, and they're also new aerodynamic 19 inch wheels. The most interesting technological change, before it was front wheel drive, or all-wheel drive, now it's the other way around, always a rear electric motor, and then you can also get the all drive version, or is that standard in your market, so the rear electric motor is always the stronger one, and they are also more efficient than before, supposed to give you a boost in range. The CD value, by the way, is 0.34 for the XC40 and 0.32 for the C40, so that means on the motorway, Higher speeds, the C40 will be even more efficient. While looking at the typical Volvo SUV shape, let's talk about the second big change. The battery, the small one, stays the same. The bigger one now, a 4 kilowatt hour upgrade to 79 kilowatt hours net. And this will also, of course, bring more range. I would always go for the big battery. In some markets, the small one is even not available. And at the end of the review, we'll check out how much range we can score with that. And the charging upgrade here, now 200 kilowatt DC peak. That means 28 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. Turning indicators in the front look pretty fancy here. They replace the Thor's Hammer daytime running light. Turning indicator in the rear. It doesn't seem like LED here. However, it has this pulsing effect, kind of. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Oh, oh, are we on? Sorry. Will it frunk or not? That looks clean. And yes, there is a small frunk underneath. Even here with this elegant back. Key fob, nothing special. Controls its side, not too practical, I found. Then door closing sound. It's actually quite decent. Then inside of the doors, here's also structured and soft touch material. Then you have the three-dimensional inlet right here, so it's actually quite likable. And also this felt covering on the inside. They also use recycled materials, just the lower part here is hard pack. Seating position here, it's actually decently comfortable as for the ergonomics. And here 18962 still have some headroom left here. As for the seats, they look pretty cool. These here are the ones that have some kind of wool share. And the strange thing is that might be because Leah told me she, you know, she was here with the short shorts, short shorts. And then, you know, when the real skin is touching the seat, it can be, you know, you know, these um, effects from like wool clothing and so on, it can be kind of unpleasant on the skin. So I would actually prefer the full, either the full leatherette seats, they're available in all market, or in uh, UK or in Germany, you can also get the seats that have the microfiber. Then also the whole car is animal free, not in this case for the wool share. If you ask yourself, hey, why would that be like an ethical problem? The thing is, if you go with your own sheep, like with your own dog to a dog's barber shop, and then take, you know, the, the, the hair or the wool from it, no problem, but as long as it's industrialized, there's also a lot of suffering in the industry when it comes to wool. Then the panoramic roof here, it's an option. And here you can also apply this shade, it's good for hot days. And this is also still one you can actually really open. There we go, and leave some fresh air in. Interior cockpit overview, it's simple and clean. Soft touch on the dashboard, then this topography, style here with these three-dimensional touchable inlets. Below that is also somewhat soft touch, a vertical screen, steering wheel also with animal-free material. And I like these matte buttons, rear buttons at the steering wheel for cruise control and to control the digital instruments. So not too much high gloss black here, just here. 
I really like the digital instruments. You can have this map view inside from the native Google Maps, but you can also deactivate it so um, you can yeah, pick it depending on your liking. And it's just easy you on the right side see the recuperation and so on, and the left side the speed. Infotainment system, here this tile view, and then in the lower part you have the climate unit. Here you can control event strength, but when you stay like this, then you can also have the individual. It's not so easy to control, it's more a car where I leave 22 degrees Celsius out or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you also have this app view, now also features YouTube apps. You can also watch YouTube movies, like the real YouTube app then, when you download it to this one. And it also supports Apple CarPlay here, this integration. Just not Android Auto because they say, hey, we have this native uh, Google and native Android Auto integration anyway. And that's why it's also a good thing here. You have Google Maps natively integrated. That's of course a cool thing. Also with calculations for charging stops and so on. So that's heads off and also quick, super good. And we still have a big manual volume jog here. Lower part, two USB-C chargers, this one for connection, the other one for charging only. Well, and then there's the inductive charging pad, but that one actually not cooled. If you have the highest trim here, you also get this crystal line alike shifting lever, and you maybe heard it, when I put it to drive mode, the car also wakes up. Cup holders, adaptive, and so they also hold these bottles tight. Check. Then this armrest here, nice material, underneath more space. I would like to know from you, if you have an XC40, are you using this paper basket, uh, this trash bin, the small one, because yeah, it tends to, you know, hold your hand when you go in there and then you can take the whole thing out, you know, um, but uh, I don't feel that it would be so useful. Well, what do you think? We have seats here on top of the rear doors. We also have soft touch and Structured material, I like that. Overall nice from the build quality, just the lower part hardback again. And then considering it's a short vehicle, it still fits here for four tall adults. Not too much space left, but it works. And also as for the headroom, once again, the C40 would have a small compromise there, but it's not a large compromise for XC40 versus C40. You rather decide on the design. And yeah, I mean, the, the bench here is kind of upright, but it's still fine and it feels more spacious than it looks like actually. Now to the trunk or the boot, 450 liters for the XC40. The C40 would be a little bit limited here in height, but that's it actually. Here, two times suitcase and backpacks, no problem. Width almost a meter of 40 inches and the length is a little bit less than 90 centimeters or 35 inches, or we fold it two-thirds of the seat, one-third is the other one. And here underneath, you can have this splitter, it's actually quite good, and then have more space underneath. And then, here on the right side, there's a button that unlocks this towing hook, and it's semi-automatic, as you see, I just touch it here that I don't get my hands dirty. Um, there we go, and I have to push the button again, and then you have to push it back. What I also want to show you here on a parking lot, when I have the seat belt not on, which you shouldn't do, of course, but just when you show you the warning chime there for the seatbelt. I think that's one that is not that annoying, but still it is present enough, you know? So I think good move. For XC40 EV or recharge, we start with an acceleration onto the motorway from 50 kilometers an hour to 100. Let's see, let's go. Plop, that's it. Woo! Yeah, this all-wheel drive model is really quick. The acceleration figure from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 0 to 60 miles an hour, is always under 5 seconds here with this all-wheel drive model, over 7 seconds with the rear-wheel drive only model, if that's available in your market. For example, the US versions are always with the dual motor and whew, that's really quick and it feels even quicker than before, before because <laughs> you know, it's still a little bit adrenaline rush here. And that's a Volvo XC40, compact SUV, you know, not like a real sports car or something. So the cool thing is that with this new setup, where the rear wheel drive motor is either standalone or in the overdrive configuration, it's the stronger one, you're getting the push from the rear before you get the pull from the front. And it just feels better and sportier by that way. Also, when you're just slightly on the throttle, you always feel that push from the rear that's just more driving fun and soon we'll also go up a mountain dynamic driving there we will feel this new setup even more 
And then of course efficiency, now more efficient, the electric motor itself. And also the front motor can be uncoupled when it is not being needed. That's of course also good for efficiency. Interesting also talking about efficiency, as for the recuperation, which is now set all the tone to adaptive recuperation. I can show you. Here in front of us is the C40. You can see the different roof line, more or less the same vehicle, but the CD value is a little bit different, as I told you earlier. 0.32 for the C40, 0.34 for this one. CD value, when it's higher, it's always worse in this case. And so, especially on motorway driving, the C40 will be more efficient. But then with the recuperation, there's not that I would pull the lever back to like a B mode or something. And when I just lift the throttle and there's a car in front of us, I have no cruise control set. Still, the speed is being reduced. Let me approach the vehicle here one more time. And now I go off the throttle. See here, recuperation is active, full recuperation, because there's a car in front of me. Now, car is gone. It's like a, it's like being scripted, right? So here now, go off the throttle, no recuperation, the car is just rolling. And that's actually a good thing in a way that you don't have to care about any recuperation modes or something. The car does it on, it, on its own and it's almost like having an adaptive cruise control set. The only disadvantage, some people argue, and I can also follow this argument, argument in a way, it's less predictable. So for example, to have it even better as for the whole driving feeling for the passenger here. It's sometimes good that you exactly know what the car is doing and that there are no additional g-forces being applied when you don't expect it. So this is definitely pro and contra. For the driver it's definitely more convenient in a way. Um, yeah, I think you can follow this argument. BMW is also tending in this direction. I can of course also set the cruise control. It also has an active cruise control setting. You can switch it and here for example the car is being actively kept in the lane. It's also actually well done. It's a smooth process. The radar sensor also to enable this, this, you know, this new adaptive recuperation. Radar sensor has been changed and now here we said keep this hands on the steering wheel. The radar sensor has been changed and now sees even further. So um, I found that the range has been more than doubled where the radar sensor can also check the vehicles in front of you. That is of course also good development and even adds more to safety. However, here you can still set these recuperation settings, driving and then here's an auto. If you put it to off, then it's always just rolling. Or if you put it to on, when you then lift the throttle, then it's always a hard recuperation. Here on the motorway, it's actually reasonably silent, good upper seating position. You feel you have a small compact SUV, yes, but the seating comfort is good, the general seat ergonomics and so on, so you can also imagine longer trips, although it is still a small vehicle, that's of course a good thing then to have. Really nice, these um, turning indicators, how they are cascading there, that's uh, always a very cool feature. Um, this vehicle here we have also equipped with the optional pixel LED. Yeah, they can ten, they tend to be really expensive when you add all the options. That's the, the downside. As for the steering feel here already, it's actually quite good. Not the most natural feeling. It feels a little bit artificial, but it is comfortable to steer. You don't need much force and you also have a reaction in small degrees angles so it doesn't deceive you in any way. So I'm overall also happy with the steering feeling. So two very important things now to come and the one is definitely the efficiency on you know long term and so on and the other one is the dynamic driving that's coming up right now now let's move it in an agile way also here uphill whoa, has a lot of power reserves that's it's it's almost a performance SUV but I mean almost it is a performance SUV <laughs> acceleration wise the suspension is also rather stiff I would say and especially here the combination with the 20-inch wheels we are driving when it's a little bit uneven on the road then it can get bumpy however here now good roads then it feels really cool and sporty as I said the steering lacks a little bit natural feedback so I don't know exactly what I'm doing you know talking on a high level here so I don't feel one with the steering and the vehicle and the road it's still nice and fun to drive so 
like steering and suspension and body roll wise you feel it's not laid out to be a performance SUV but it's still fun to drive the seats of course are also not laid out for performance driving so they lack a little bit of side support so that's not the main focus of this vehicle but it's still nice in a way because there's these compact dimensions and so on and yeah accelerating out of the corners here that's the most favorable part here now with this upgrade because it's just feeling so much sport here you remember when you're getting more power on the front wheels you rather have understeering here when you have more power at the rear wheels you rather have oversteering and yeah i mean considering you know but it's just well, with a panoramic view it's just really a lot of fun just to steer it around the corners especially that's that's really super super cool and then talking about the efficiency figure before I did this fast uphill drive and we landed at about 18 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers with mixed some motorway excavation some city and so on that is around three and a half miles per kilowatt hour that is better than before and not as good as the Polestar 2 we've just driven with the same technology. Polestar 2 just has a better CD value. Here then it would mean a realistic range of 440 kilometers or 270 miles. And that's definitely a huge increase because before that it could be well below 400 kilometers or 250 miles. So here two things playing together, a little bit bigger battery and the increased efficiency. So it won't be like this range wonder now suddenly, but definitely a good upgrade that helps you. And the C40 will, as I said, be a little bit more efficient, especially when you drive more motorway and so on. And if you want to enjoy even more content here, XC40 versus C40 pre-facelift, we have a separate video on that. Or check out the recently Face of it, Polestar 2.